Now that you've completed your UCAT, personal statement, BMAT, and submitted your application to UCAS, it's finally interview season, the most dreaded time of year for any medical school applicant. Hi, I'm Marisma, a medical student at King's College London, and for today's video, we've spoken to medical students across the UK's top medical schools and asked them for their top tips on interview season. This covers both general tips as well as specific tips for the MMI and panel interviews. So stay tuned for more. Before we get into the video, make sure to smash that subscribe button because we post weekly videos to help you with your application. So let's get into it. Before attending your interview, it's really important to read up about the medical school you're applying to as well as the surrounding area. First of all, this will help you really understand whether you want to go to that university if you get an offer. And secondly, it also makes you seem a lot more informed during the interview. So for example, would you be ready to answer a question like, why do you want to go to this medical school? If not, it's really worth reading up about the course structure, the hospitals that you might go to, the form of teaching, how many tutors there are, what subjects are covered during the course, elective options, intercalation, and a range of different factors about the medical school itself. It's worth having a couple of factors that you can mention in the interview as to what makes this medical school different and unique to you, and therefore why you want to go there. On the other hand, it's also important to read up about things which are not so favorable, mostly for your own interest, so you are able to accurately judge whether this medical school is truly for you. Now, my top tip is to focus on the structure of your answer. Many students spend most of their time focusing on the content for their interview answers, including NHS and medical ethics hot topics. Now, while those things are important, it is also equally important to focus on how you structure your answer. And we have a mnemonic to help you out with that. And that is PEEL. PEEL stands for point, explanation, example and link. So let's use the PEEL method to explore what an answer about teamwork would look like. So let's start with P, which stands for point. You would define what teamwork is and also what good and bad teamwork is. We then move on to explanation. So talking about why teamwork is so important in medicine. Then moving on to an example of how you have shown teamwork. So you could be talking about any of your extracurricular activities, playing sports, playing in an orchestra or any specific situation, depending on what the examiner has asked you. And lastly, L, which stands for link. Always link your answer back to medicine and always link your answer back to the specific question that your interviewer has asked you. Just like anything else, you want to ensure that your interview practice as close as possible mimics the actual thing. At first, you can absolutely use your parents or friends to get used to being asked questions and getting used to thinking on the spot. However, the feedback that they're gonna be able to give you will be fairly limited because obviously they're not someone that knows a lot about the subject. The absolute gold standard will be medical students or doctors. And for this, we would in fact highly recommend our one-to-one -one interview tutoring service. It's an award-winning course that has helped so many students get into medical school. And through this, we'll be able to give you free access to over 200 plus videos and 200 plus exemplar answers. We've got expert tutors from across the UK to help you get into medical school. One of the traps that I think a lot of students fall into at interview stage of any medical school application is that of answering questions that are not actually being asked. It's really important that when you're in the interview, you actually take some time to listen to what your interviewer is saying specifically. Taking a moment, um, taking a breath, and sitting there for just a few seconds to digest what you've been asked and what your answer is going to be can actually make you look more impressive than a student who reels off an answer as soon as the question has finished being asked. I think that um, if you don't follow this sort of advice, then what you can commonly do is start answering a question that you think you've been asked, but in fact, it's just one you had in your practice interviews um, before the real one, and the, uh, the interviews actually changed it ever so slightly, meaning that the, the meaning of the question is slightly different. Now, if you get frazzled in your interview and if you get stuck at a particular question, your first instinct is going to be to panic. Do I start over? Do I take a minute and pause? Or do I just carry on like nothing happened? Well, the worst thing that you can do in this situation is to panic. So do not panic. And that is obviously easier said than done. But if you do get frazzled or if you do get stressed out at a particular station or after a particular question in your panel interview, that is okay and it happens to more students than you would guess. Take a minute to gather your thoughts and de-stress and then continue to answer the question in a calm way. So you can tell your interviewer, 
I just need a moment to gather my thoughts so I can answer this question well. That's completely fine and interviewers are going to understand. By stepping back and taking a moment to calm down and gather your thoughts, you're showing them that you can identify what a high stress situation is and you're taking a moment to calm down. And that is exactly what they want in doctors. In fact, this happened with me in my King's interview where I was absolutely frazzled by a question that the interviewer had asked me about professionalism and I didn't know where to carry on with the answer. So I took a minute and I thought to myself, what is the interviewer really asking me? What do I know about professionalism? And how can I answer this question to the best of my ability? And after that minute, I carried on my answer. And well, today I am studying at King's College London. So if you get frazzled, take a minute, gather your thoughts, and it won't affect your interview negatively at all. This one is what to do if you make a mistake. Making a mistake is absolutely fine. In fact, I made so many during my Oxbridge interview and that's completely, completely fine. What they're looking for is how well you can then reevaluate that. For example, if you've only spoken about arguments for or in favor of an argument and you haven't considered it against it, but you realize it midway through, you can say, well, actually on reflection now, I can think of some arguments against this argument X, Y, Z. And that's something that you can therefore talk about. And that shows actually that you can offer a balanced viewpoint and that you can come to a different conclusion when you have new information available to you. And that shows an open mind, which is really important as a doctor, when of course you're gonna be taking in new information. So don't be afraid of making a mistake. So you can admit to it and actually that's quite desirable because it shows that actually you're quite open and you're quite humble as well. Some of my top interview tips are specifically for MMI, that each station is a new start. Every time you go to a new station, that person has no idea what you did in that last station. They have no idea if it went poorly, no idea if you failed. They just, you're a new blank slate. So I know it's cliche, but every time that you go to a new station, just pretend like it's the first station you ever do. If you thought you did poorly in the last station, you could allow that detrimental thought to come into this station and make you do more poorly than you would have otherwise. So just thinking about it like a new station makes it a lot easier and at the end of the day you'll probably end up doing better thinking that each station has nothing to do with the one before it. Okay so my next tip is all about extra reading and for this one it's really important to have a good breadth and depth about the NHS in particular as well as medical science as well as what's just going on in terms of medicine within the UK. That's going to be really important because you're going to be spending the next 40 years of your life at least working for the NHS so it's really important to understand the current successes and the challenges being faced and you can do this by staying up to date on the Guardian and BBC Health on a weekly if not daily basis and this will be really really useful and for this I'd highly recommend that you check out our webinar series where we go through a range of different patient case studies and that will give you an opportunity to develop your extra reading as well as our online interview course which you can check out link is in the description below. The thing that I want to stress here is that extra reading can come in different forms. It could be reading a book, it could be a podcast. We've got a whole series of medicine podcasts that we'd recommend that you can check out on our website. You've also got blogs on our website all about interview knowledge and those are going to be really, really useful. You've got our online interview course, you've got our YouTube channel, you've got our webinars, you've got our online work experience course. All of these will put you in really good stead and mean that you're going to be able to be in that top 30% to really stand out from the crowd and excel compared to your competitors. Before going into any interviews, it's really worth knowing your personal statement inside out. And that's especially the case for panel interviews because the interviewers are quite likely to have already read your personal statement and therefore will be ready to ask you questions about the things that you've written. This can include the more obvious things to ask about, such as the books you've read, any extracurriculars you mention, and any subject interests that you claim to have. But it can also include the less obvious things to ask about such as an ethical discussion about a particular scenario that you mentioned seeing on your work experience. Therefore, make sure that you really read through your personal statement bit by bit and reflect on what you've written. In the case of things like books, it's worth reading a summary of the book a day or two before the interview to make sure that it's fresh in your head. Asking yourself practice questions related to what you've written can be a really good way of making sure that you understand and have remembered everything that you've mentioned in your personal statement. With a lot of universities moving away from panel interviews and towards MMIs, it can be really important to really make an impression with your interviewer and to be engaging. One way to do this is through the use of body language. Aside from your answers and the way you talk, your body language can really give the interviewer an impression of how confident you're feeling, not only in your answers, but in yourself at the interview by sitting over hunched, speaking with um, a small voice, 
you can really give the impression that you're nervous and you don't know what you're talking about. But if you sit back, you open your shoulders, you relax them, you don't cross your legs, you keep your legs at shoulder width apart and you don't fidget, then you can really give the impression that you know what you're talking about and you're confident with each one of your answers. My last interview tip would be that each university is genuinely interested in you. That's why they invited you to interview. If they weren't interested in you, they would have rejected you right off the bat. So their main goal is to make sure that you're the same person that you've said you are on your application form. That is the best fit for their university. That's why they've chosen you to come in. So as long as you perform exactly like you said you were, which you should just be yourself at that point, you have your best chances of getting into that school. They are genuinely interested in you now. They're just making sure that you are who you say you are. So that brings us to the end of today's video and we hope you found it useful. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the links in the description box below and access our interview course, which covers common questions and topics that come up in both panel and MMI interviews created by medical students at the UK's top medical universities and access our one-to-one -one tutoring service where you can be matched up with a medical student at the university of your choice who can take you through both the content of interviews as well as your style of giving answers and don't forget to smash that subscribe button because we have some top-notch interview content coming up to help you out this interview season so see you later